All right. Hello, everyone. This is the, another uh, Park Office Hours. Today is June the 16th. Uh, we have a code of conduct in place. Uh, you can check out the calendar invite and reach out to the document. And in that document, you can find out the code of conduct. Gist of it, just be nice to each other. And today we are gonna talk about a lot of new updates, I guess. Even though we haven't released uh, any version of Parker or Agent, we are about to though. So, but we will just wanna update you guys. So, but first, I guess we have a kind of a naming issue, and Fede going to talk about it. Yeah, I can quickly touch on that. So yeah, we renamed um, Arctic DB to Frost DB. While this doesn't, you know, directly have anything to do with the Parker project, we he heavily rely on uh, what is now FrostDB, right? Um, the the reason was just um, another company held a trademark for Arctic DB, and so we felt like it was the best choice for us to rename and you know <laughs> not start a legal battle. Um, they were also very nice about it and everything. Um, so uh, yeah. Basically, it was just a rename. Um, everything's good. So yeah, that's that. Um, I did also um, write a bunch of things in the uh, announcement blog post about what has happened since we launched uh, the project. And I think that's that was, you know, it's only been a month. And it's been super cool to see what's happened since then. Like, we've got several um, contributors um, in this call, right? Like. I think this is super cool to see, and I called that out in the blog post as well. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty exciting. And I think we merged like almost a hundred pull requests or something since then. Like it's pretty wild. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for being part of that. I guess that's it on the naming. Okay, great. So just to remind you, I just added the link of the blog post plus uh, the link of the document. Uh, you can just like sign in if you want as a participant, and you can find all the updates, links, and the previous meeting notes in that document. Cool. Uh, I guess we're going to talk about next about the Parka updates and the agent updates uh, for the Parka site. Uh, Matthias, do you want to talk about? in detail some of the things i know but some of them i have no right. idea <laughs> so yeah, let me let me quickly start this off by demoing what yomi has built um and that is that we finally oops i found actually a profile without any any names um why do we have something i want names <sighs> Let me try and find the Parker system namespace. Maybe some. Well, oh, that's great for the demo. Um, <laughs> there is some names here. I don't know why that's broken. We are running latest main branches on on both Parker agent and Parker here. So yeah, uh, I think there are some bug fixes to do. But kind of like what what what. Um, uh, yeah, Yomi has built is that you can now at least uh, do a, a a search through the stack traces that are in in the in the flame graph or icicle graph, and also for the table, you can now search for the same um, function names. So while that's super exciting, um, and I think at least I uh, did this quite often with the browser search um, to kind of like at least be able to search somehow. Then you wouldn't wouldn't see um, if there were many flame graphs. You wouldn't see where it actually matched because um, it was hidden, etc. Um, but yeah, now at least that's there. Um, I think we are still far from from done with uh, search functionality. Um, we want to be able to search properly, not only in the UI. We want to be able to search in the database and be able to search really only subsets of stack traces, for example, as well, so that we don't even need to query all the data in the first place. Um, like maybe you only want to see uh, Go profiles, uh, stack trace from the Go profile side of things and kind of like exclude all the kernel stuff or the other way around, etc. 
like there are many ways uh, that searching is going to be possible in the future. And um, yeah, this is kind of like a first start. But yeah, it's pretty exciting because you don't need to use the browser search anymore. Um, is there anything else we can demo, I guess? I don't know if that's been deployed, but it was kind of funny if you had um, a search where nothing happened. Yeah, and there we are. Um, if we select something where there's no data, now we get a nicer error. That was something someone from the community contributed, um, and now it kind of makes sense as to what that error is supposed to say to, to the user. Um, smoother graph resizing. Um, I don't even know about that one, but I guess it's hard to demo, but it should be smoother. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's always nice performance improvements. Uh, everything else, I think I can stop sharing my screen. Um, yeah, we have ARM builds. So with the next release, like the, the main branch is already built um, with ARM 64. So your Raspberry Pi or um, some some other uh, architectures using ARM 64 can, can now run the images and pull the images without doing anything else. That's pretty exciting. And the next release of Paka should come with that out of the box. Um, yeah, and lots of other fixes and improvements. And some of them, Kemai put his name in front. Um, so you wanna wanna talk about these? Yeah, probably because of those things, I broke the symbolization right now in the demo. So sorry for that, because we just merged something in the agent as well. So we are trying to improve basically symbolization and it depends on the debug information. And we discovered some race conditions uh, when you concurrently try to update some debug information from a process that we scrape. Uh, so for that, we introduced um, metadata for those debug information and we're trying to uh, minimize the critical region for those uploads. It's not done yet, but uh, there's already another PR to improve that. We merge uh, something about like the reducing the race conditions. But yeah, we are constantly wor working on that. One other thing related to that, we recently get rid of uh, object dump, object copy, and uh, EU strip. This is AppUtils strips. This is uh, these are uh, uh, Linux uh, packages or binaries. You may say to just like manipulate the Alf binaries. Uh, these were the uh, C programs that we were using to scrape those debug information. But we recently uh, come up with a Alf writer that's purely written in Go. It's not like fully fledged uh, and complete uh, when you consider the Alf format itself, uh, but it does the job for us right now. It's merge, and because of that, now we can also get rid of the interim file creation. And we believe that because of like, we are getting rid of uh, like creating files and moving them around, uh, we can improve the stability of agent. But again, like apparently we broke something. I'm gonna come to that. <laughs> On top of that, uh, like Matthias mentioned, the ARM64 builds for the agent, we recently moved to uh, Rust for the BPF programs, for the kernel programs. And since that move, uh, the ARM64 builds were like broken for the agent, but now they are fixed. So like, that's a nice improvement for the next release, which will be soon, I guess, we will have the support as well. And we also like, this is kind of a, they have experience improvement, but like we kind of make the uh, container builds a little bit faster. These were the builds that like run for the all the uh, pull requests basically. And recently we also got another uh, like contribution from the co community actually Maxim, he is also in the call as well. So he actually improved our like cross platform container builds and CI pipelines as well. So they are like running faster and they are more stable right now. This is also super awesome. So uh, yeah, thanks for that again. So yeah, all in all, uh, the next release uh, for Parka, I guess like Matthias just like count them like 250 commits uh, since we released Parka. So like there were a lot of changes on top of that for Parka agent, there are some major things like we get rid of these external dependencies on top of that. 
we moved our B BPF program pipeline to Rust, and we are also working on a lot of stability improvements. So, like, stay tuned for the next releases. Did I miss anything? Do you think, guys? No. Okay. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. These were the updates that we had in mind, but the board is open. Uh, if you want to ask any questions, if you want to comment on anything, or if you want to just say hi, I guess this is the time. I, uh, I think the search thing in the UI is great. Um, you know, we've, I've been doing that before where you get a lot of stack traces and you try to use the browser search and it's too small and then you zoom way out and then you can do it, but then it's a little bit funny. So that's uh, that's great tough to uh, Yomi for put up on it. Yeah, I I was super happy when he put uh, opened the PR. <laughs> I was like, oh, finally, it's not like the end of as I said, like of what we want to build, but it's at least something, and it's <laughs> a huge UX improvement. Yeah. I think what one thing I I don't think we I asked uh, Monica if I should share this already, but. Um, she she didn't reply, so I'm just gonna share it anyways. Um, so because she has a like work in progress pull request open for this. So one thing that I think that's that's this is still ongoing, as I said. Um, it's not, I think relatively far from being done, but I think it's very exciting work, which is why I wanna give Monica a, sh a shout out. Uh, so Monica is working on um, improving or no, adding an, another kind of visualization for profiling data, uh, which is the, if people are familiar with PProf, with, um, it's kind of a remake of the call graph visualization, where instead of having a flame graph where you kind of see cumulatives and then kind of the stacks underneath, the call graph you see functions only once globally, and then there are arrows that kind of connect um, the the stacks um, and i'm trying to find the screenshot that she shared yesterday i got i found it um i'll share it in the chat um i think this is super exciting um so essentially like i said she kind of rebuilt the call graph uh visualization and because we're kind of doing this now in javascript as opposed to in uh, with pprof, like an, a static SVG, there are a bunch more helpful things that we can do in terms of making it interactive and making a zoomed out version much more useful than in pprof, where you kind of need to scroll in to read any of the text and then sc scroll out to kind of fi find your your position in the um, in the whole document. So yeah, I'm I'm excited about this work, um, and I think she's she's been doing a really amazing job with it. Just wanted to give her a shout out. All right. Any other comments, questions? Uh, yeah, uh, I just had a quick question. So I only ran Parka once locally while I was starting uh, to get to know it, but I haven't explored it really. So I was looking today at the documentation and the tutorials. Would you so, uh, go through that first uh, and see what the features are and uh, uh, everything? Or would you suggest I build something small and uh, deploy Parpa on that so I get my hands dirty a bit more and uh, get to learn more? I think that's a that's a great idea. Like I. I I personally find it most useful to profile work that um, you know I've touched myself because um, especially if you're learning, it means that you're not learning a code base and the tool at the same time, right? Like if it's code that you've written, then at least you know half of the equation. So um, I would recommend, like you said, deploy something that you wrote, maybe some software, 
some other software that you work on on a day-to-day -day basis um, and profile that and understand it that way. Yeah, so uh, I'm uh, not uh, here for my um, professional basis. Like I'm only learning part of myself. Uh, so uh, some I'll build some small tool or some it. So I basically just need uh, function calls, right? Uh, to see flame graphs and uh, or is it something else? Uh, I mean, you need to you you would just use like Parker agent um, to to collect the the data. I I would suggest that, or if it's written in Go, you can use the scraper. Yeah, I'll be working in Golang. So what I'm getting at is, uh, what should I make? Like just some APIs or something to, uh, would that be sufficient to give uh, some data and see and explore? Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, one of the examples that we have in the Parka demo repo is just like the classic Fibonacci um, calculation because if you do it inefficiently, it uses a bunch of CPU mm. and that produces pretty graphs. Um, yeah. So also, you know, if you don't know what to do, then you can also just try to run that example. Yeah, cool, thanks. So yeah, like cool. definitely try to, to build something like in, in a way that you usually wouldn't build it, like make it bad. So you see memory and CPU usage. Um, and it's more interesting, right? So, yeah. Sorry, come I on. don't really know much about uh, optimization anyway, so I genuinely believe that. <laughs> That's also a good way to learn. You then see where the bottlenecks are, and then you improve. That's what we do with Arctic DB these days in Parka itself. We just profile it using Parka, and then we see where we can can do the next improvements other than benchmarking and and metrics. Yeah, I was going to suggest the same thing. I guess the best thing that I like about like Parka, just like get our uh, Minikube or Kubernetes examples with the manifest and deploy them and just let it run. And like you already have a lot of stack traces because of the components of Kubernetes. And we just um, with the Parka agent by default, we scrape them and you can see them symbolized. And you can just like poke around with the Parka agent and Parka and see where you can actually optimize. And, I don't know, then try to contribute back. That always works. OK. Any more questions? Did, uh, did you folks want to talk about the parallel um, query execution stuff in this forum, or is that better to talk about it on, on GitHub and Discord? Um, no, it absolutely it's... influences the Parker project significantly. So <laughs> I think okay, it's a cool. great. Sure. So maybe I can give an update on on how it's going. So I uh, um, I spent some time with it um, last week um, over the weekend, kind of in the evenings, um, where um, where you guys sort of saw the code in that PR. Um, I and there were some comments on that. Of course, I'll go back and fix those. Um, uh, you know, I put a comment on the issue that that code was about, um, it gave us kind of a 2x performance improvement over um, what we were getting just in the single threaded query execution. Um, so I spent some time benchmarking that over the weekend. Um, and I think uh, when you control for things like um, garbage collection not happening in the uh, in like the query itself. So I would manually run GC between like query executions and also turn go GC way up. Um, and uh, as well as um, making the like building a query that necessarily takes a lot longer to execute than um, it takes to um, traverse the B tree because that is single threaded right now when we collect all those blocks. Um, that gave us about, it was a little over 4x improvement. I also ran it on a dedicated. Um, uh, VM, just a um, VM Google Cloud that was 16 core. So that's good, right? I mean, you know, maybe we would expect um, a bit more than that, considering that had um, it had eight cores, but you know, 16 hyperthreads. Um, so uh, anyway, I uh, I can keep trying to work with it, trying to find like where the bottlenecks are, or um, or maybe we can just uh, plot forward. Uh, the other thing I found is that doing if you execute that code. Um, we do um, 
the exchange operator at the filter step so that um, so the filter step it um, spawns new um, new go routines and then those do the filtering and then that continues um, that didn't actually really make that big of a difference after we parallelized it at the table level so at, when we're iterating the table blocks those just divvy those up across a bunch of um, go routines, and it doesn't really make a big difference if you spawn new go routines in the middle of the physical plan. So I was thinking for the sake of just, um, I don't know, maybe simplicity for now, we could take out that exchange operator part, do the parallelization at the, uh, um, uh, in the table iterator, and then um, just have those table, or have the physical plan basically run like start to end with no, uh, with no uh, horizontal splits, if that, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, I realized I told you guys like 10 things right there in a row. The, um, how does that strike you? Um, I, I think this doesn't make sense, right? Like basically the, if we do it at the table iterator, we can do, and if people aren't familiar, uh, Albert actually started, uh, writing a really cool design doc. Um, on all of this as well, you should definitely check it out if you're interested in this topic more. Um, basically, what we're what we end up building instead of the like volcano style exchange operator, we would actually build build like a shared nothing architecture where essentially we could even go as far. And I think Albert, you sort of insinuated this. Um, we could could go as far as building, you know, n buckets. Um, when we insert into the table at, in the first place, so that like there's not even any synchronization at the iterator level that needs to happen. Literally, it's just already split up into that chart, right? Um, and then when we read, all the all the kind of um, workers already have all of the data that they need to read, and they don't need to synchronize with the other workers in any shape or form. I, my gut feeling is that is probably the um most promising direction but I, I don't know for sure yeah sure so i guess like given that um do you guys want to uh forward with um trying to merge a version of what's in that pr now or if not maybe i could take it away and revisit the right path and, and figure out how we bucket it um to uh make different shards and then um Versus like just merging something that's like kind of like half done, but maybe not the the end design that we want. I don't think I feel strongly either way. We're not. It doesn't feel like we're breaking APIs, and as long as we're not breaking APIs, if this already improves performance, I, I think I'm happy with going with this. Yeah, I agree. That that's what I was about to say. Like let's let's move, like merge this in, and I think we're totally fine. Kind of like cleaning up the bits and pieces that are on the PR, and then get that in. Um, and yeah, definitely, like everything else can be done in in another PR afterwards. Like the touching the rights and stuff that that looks or sounds a bit like bigger. So yeah, for, <laughs> exactly. Four X is not shabby. No, not at all. Cool. And, and I suspect we will see some other improvements in some some other areas as well that are even higher. So yeah, let's, let's, if that already works and as Frederick said, it doesn't break APIs, let's put it in and yeah, we can look at the next problem kind of in, in a different, like more isolated light again. Sounds good. So, um, like I said, this is kind of the evenings and weekends project for me. So I, I might not have it, um, finished up till the sometime next week, but, um, it sounds like a plan anyway. Cool. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Yeah, there's no rush. <laughs> I don't think any one of us is working yeah. on like query performance right now anyway. So um, okay, cool. it's, it's not like you're blocking anything or, or anything like that. So um, yeah, any any improvements is, are amazing. <laughs> All right, cool. Sounds good. I actually, not, since we were talking about it, I do wonder, does it mean though that we need to introduce the like synchronization primitives in a later okay. stage? 
That's yeah. So that was like the last thing I mentioned that PR was that um, I think we would want to synchronize at the very like the very final callback um, that executes a query. We do we do want to add a synchronization on that because like you said, someone could pass in a query callback that they didn't write to be thread safe, and then of course you get in an issue. We have that in one of our unit tests. So um, yeah, so I'll uh, I'll try adding those in and see um, see how much it slows down. I guess. Um, Hopefully not too much, but to be seen. Yeah, I actually ran into this problem, like um, having the iterators be concurrent. And I think if I remember correctly, what I ended up doing, like in the column query, um, like in the query that used the columnar store, it's called column query, I think. Um, there is one, one of the functions, probably the query range function that already writes into like a map or does some deduplication already. So something similar for the, for those other things uh, is what, what I did. But then you need to have like a, a map for deduplicating things based on the stack trace ID or something. And then yes, we are kind of like, we are then concurrently reading with these iterators, but then we are kind of like at the problem of having a mutex on, on a shared map again in the end. So I'm I'm curious if there's a better way, but that's that's at least what I did to kind of like make it work to begin with. What was the um, expression? It was the query range column query. I don't know if that was the one, but like it, it was like in the like where the actual queries are constructed and then sent off to the to the storage. Um, it also is like the final iterator and that's the place where I also needed to touch it. So let me okay. you really quickly try to find if there yeah, was something sure. if, specific. Um, if, if you don't have it, you can find you can just uh, post the uh, link, to, link to it on the PR. Um, yeah, the yeah, true, true, true. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it does strike me a little as a little bit odd to do it there because essentially we're saying the database doesn't synchronize any of the data, and um, you know if there is a hash aggregation, for example, then the user needs to also <laughs> be part of like of applying that aggregation, right? Because it could come in in um, incomplete forms. That is very true. Yes. I think in, in in that sense, then Albert, um, I I would leave it up to you whether it adding like introducing those uh, synchronization primitives, which we would probably eventually get rid of, um, is you know worth it weighing it off with the um, uh, time that you need to put into it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I mean. Um... I guess uh, I guess one thing we could do is not not have that and query synchronize and then um, uh, and we also have to test it against Parker, right? Because I don't know if Parker has any um, places where it passes in, um, you know, maybe maybe, uh, maybe a callback that's not thread safe, but um, I can. Uh, it, it definitely isn't right now. That's that's what okay. Matthias was saying. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I'm, I, the that thing I, I just posted is the the one API that uses a map to deduplicate, and oh, that's the thing I put like a mutex around to make it thread safe. But yeah, it was kind of <laughs> okay. more of a hack, right? So, yeah, so yeah. and and it gets more complicated for like the actual stack traces that we need to query, because then yeah, there's more de deduplication. Out. So yeah, I guess it needs a bit more thought. That's what I'm saying. Why? Uh, interesting. Okay. Um, well, hey, you know what? I can. Uh, this is interesting. I can. I'll, I'll look into uh, seeing what we can do maybe at the at the RTTV level. Anyway, you know, maybe it's um, maybe there's even an option, right, that you can pass into um, when you query. That's like whether you want to see this or whether you don't. Um, maybe, you know, maybe that's a bit pokey too, or you just might not understand the difference. Um, What's the thought anyway? Because um, if it doesn't, uh, 
if, if you're not using a map to do the data at the end, then maybe you say, hey, you know what, this callback um, can run in parallel. And, and I don't mind, but I also want to have the option so I don't have to, like as a, as a user, right, then you wouldn't have to um, write your own code at the end to use a mutex or whatever. You could just rely on us to do it, um, but you don't necessarily have to um, if, uh, if you want. Um, that would give the choice. It's kind of like similar to, even though we don't have this today, the like sort query plan that we were thinking of having, right? Like users can choose whether they need the data that they're reading to be in sorted order, or you know, if not, well then we can exploit a bunch of um, optimizations that don't care about sorting. Interesting. I uh, I hadn't heard of that that plan, but I did see the comments in the table where it's like, you might not need to sort this so we don't do it. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, um, it's an interesting thought anyway. I mean, one thing we could do is we could just, I could, I could look, like, step into it, see how much work it is to synchronize our callback. Um, if it's not that much work, we can add it and then we could have, a, um, then we could have an option to turn it, um, to turn it on and off um, that you pass into the query an execute option or a, maybe something in the, um, I guess it probably does make sense to have it at the, uh, in query to execute, because that's what you pass the callback into, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, versus having it at like the physical plane or some other place in the API. From an API perspective, I think that makes sense to have the, the options and the callback together. Um, yeah, I, I think that this is a little bit more complicated though. And now that I think about it some more, even in the like shared nothing architecture, we will need some form of synchronization that puts all of the all of the result into into one um, result stream, right? Um, and so may, maybe we can actually, if we just think about what we'll need in the future, maybe we can build that already today. Um, it's like that, it, that finisher um, function that runs. But the, I think the hash aggregate was one place that, that sets that. Yeah, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll need to think about like, if, if we do like, it might be kind of a mixture of a shared nothing and the volcano style architecture where once we add, let's say a hash aggregate, we like in the shared nothing architecture where we have multiple pipelines executing similar things, right, in, in various shards. And then we need kind of a merge operation that kind of takes all of the results from all of those pipelines and merges them into one, right? But if we have a hash aggregation, for example, in the pipelines, then we need to have that hash aggregation in that merge operator as well um, so yeah. that we get a single result at the end. And you know what, now that you mention it, I think that what we have now for a hash aggregation might not do that. Because we don't clone the physical plan and pass it into each um, uh, each worker. So that would, uh, that's something I got to fix as well on that VR action as I mentioned it. Because um, right now it's, uh, um, obviously, we, I mean, we don't want the synchronization, right? It's like you said, we want to merge it at the end in that finisher. Um, I'll, uh, I can I can look into that as well. Maybe it is a simple. I think I think that does, that does make sense. That if you say, hey, you know what, we like somehow clone the physical plan, pass it to all the workers, and at the end, um, we have some kind of uh, more uh, more smarter, for lack of a better word, you know, uh, finisher that merges the, the aggregations of the streams together. Um, yeah. I, I... I, like I, I get the I get the impression that basically it, it's not it's not identical to the like volcano exchange style operator, but it's like if like we're essentially building two query plans, right? Like we're building once the parallelizable um, sections and then once the the one that synchronizes everything. And like depending on what the overall logical plan is, we end up building these differently. Yeah, of course. Um, but like, for example, a filter plan 
doesn't influence that at all, right? Like because we don't care about the like that the the data will already have been correctly filtered, so we don't need to apply that in the like merge section anymore. But a hash aggregate would need would would matter. Um, I'm not exactly sure. There's probably th there's probably some sort of um, like uh, relational algebra term for the the kind of operations, the like characteristics that they have, but like I, I'm like I'm almost certain that this is like not a novel thing, right? Like I, this this sound sounds like a solved problem, and if we find the right term, we can probably find some papers that have discussed something yeah. like this before. Yeah, so whoever, whoever finds the term, share it first, and we can all uh, <laughs> sounds good research on it. Um, uh, yeah, you're right. Um, I, I don't know what the I don't know what the term would be in the in the literature either, unfortunately. Uh, anyway, um, okay, guys. Look, I didn't want to uh, um, steal everyone else's uh, time for the discussion, but I think I think we you know we've, uh, we get some good points to get some good uh, direction anyway. Um, certainly, we'll understand the uh, uh, what kind of solve it better. Let's talk it as a group. For what it's worth, I think the discussion was good to have here because on GitHub that would have been way more detailed on what what the <laughs> what the PR yeah. already does, but not as yeah. like forward thinking, right? So yeah, yeah it was sure. good to to raise it. I'm sorry, I just want to remind that this is why we have office hours and that's why we call this office hours. So please bring any questions that you have that doesn't fit in a issue or Discord. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so cool. Any other questions? All right, then. I guess this is the end for this week's office hours. You can, uh, if you uh, attended this later, you can find the recording in, in our YouTube channel. It will be there tomorrow, probably. And if you want to reach us, you can always use our Discord and GitHub. Which medium do you prefer? Cool. So see you guys later, everyone. Until next time. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Good to see new faces. Bye-bye.